Well, welcome to another episode of Barn Find Hunter. I just want to show you, this is called Auto Barn. It's a, a storage facility for cars, as I call it, with people, people with more cars than brains. I just wrote another book about barn finding, which you'll be able to buy later this year, and it's how to find cars. Well, one of, my, one of the places I suggest in that book is to go to a storage facility. Now, you think of a storage facility as being metal buildings, units that people put furniture in. Sometimes they park cars in there, boats on the outside, whatever. Well, this is another kind of storage building. And, you know, if somebody were to walk through here and said, man, I really would like to buy that MGB, you would just go to the front desk and say, hey, you know, do you think that guy wants to sell an MGB? or that MGTD, or that Datsun 510, or whatever. Here's just another place to come looking for cars. You can knock on doors, you can look in barn doors, or you can come to a place like this. And I've got a few cars sprinkled around here, but the rest of these are other renters. When I was in the racing business, I, ha I owned a bunch of race cars like this one that we would bring around to uh, shopping centers and car dealerships. This is an 85 Monte Carlo notchback Winston Cup car that, uh, Darrell Waltrip drove to a championship in 85. And this is the last stock car I own. I used to own dozens of them. And funny cars and all sorts of cars that were display cars. I didn't race this, I didn't race a funny car. And so these are cars that we would bring to dealerships and hopefully build traffic uh, for people to come and look at new cars and, or buy Budweiser or whatever. So this is just sitting here. So you know, this is one of my own barn finds. This is one that I own. <laughs> that I, I probably just need to get rid of one of these days. But that was an authentic stock car that came out of the Junior Johnson stable and ran on the NASCAR circuit for years. It's a short track car. Here's a, here's a 510 that I own. And I bought this from the original owner, a woman that bought it in 1972, brand new, for $1,995. I've got the receipt. Sadly, instead of sitting in the empty garage that was over here, she had it sitting on the lawn over here for 25 years, whatever, but you know, I got it for 500 bucks and she cried as it left because it was the car that she bought right out of high school. It was a high school car. But my first 510 is this car right here and it just come out of the paint shop. I bought this for $250 in 1978 and it became my race car, my street car, I drove it to the track, I raced it and drove it home again. That's the way it should be. Lime Rock, Bridgehampton, Pocono, places like that. I sold it to a buddy in mm, 1982. 26 years later, it was offered back to me for free. Just come and get it out of my yard. It's rushed in the ground. So I'm building the, car, the 510 that I could never afford to build back in the day. Fiberglass fenders, flares. This is a Porsche color paint job. Um, I, I got a set of Recaro seats I'm going to have re, uh, re, uh, reupholstered. I've got all the new taillights and bumpers and everything at home. So uh, this is going to start slowly going back together. And then this MGTD, I feel so bad about it. I, I restored this car, <laughs> 85, 86, when I moved to North Carolina. It was, it was a car that looked like this and I made it a beautiful car and it took best to show, and I painted it myself, and took the body off the frame and everything. And then little by little, when you don't use it, you leave it in a warehouse. I don't have it covered, sadly. I'm sure that all the hydraulics need to be gone through. I, I probably just need to sell this, because it's not doing me any good. But it was a great, fun car that uh, I'll miss, but somebody else needs to have fun with it, too. Oh, I got to show you one more car. You'll love this. This is my Morris Minor race car. I've owned this since uh, 1988, maybe, or something like that. Bird poop, okay. Morris Minor should never be a race car. In, in England, they call it a nanny car. It was like, you know, this is a car that nannies drive to pick up the kids from school or whatever. But I made a race car out of it, and it is a blast to drive. There's a famous race driver named Brian Redman who started his racing career racing his mother's Morris Minor station wagon. He co-drove with me in, 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 one, in one race, so I have a sticker on there still. But it's got a full roll cage. You know, it's, it's a full race car. There's got no engine or transmission there right now. But we've had so much fun 
in this car. I remember we did a two and a half hour enduro where you had to make two five minute pit stops and we didn't need to make a second pit stop, but the rule said you had to be in the pits for five minutes twice. So in the second pit stop, we did a full wash, wax, detail, armor all the tires, clean the windshield, the whole thing. I had a whole crew wash this car in pit lane and we finished the race with the cleanest car on the track. So lots of good times. You know, as I'm walking out here, I remember, oh, that's my car too. I wanna to share this with you as well. This is a car that I bought in, I think, 1979 for $400 because my, my mom was from Germany. So the only family cars we ever had when I was a kid were Volkswagens. Started up mostly with Beetles and a square back and whatever. So I bought this when I was kind of newly married and it's a 1960 VW convertible. And it sat and sat and sat because it was in pretty rough shape. But I put new fenders on it, put new floors in it, put a new, this is a Mercedes Benz uh, canvas top called Hearts Canvas. I had that made for it. If you look at the interior, these seats are original upholstery. The door panels are original. It's, it's pretty sanitary, uh, pretty nice car. It's got Porsche wheels on it. What I try to do is make it look like somebody maybe in the 60s that couldn't afford a Porsche Speedster, but they kind of wanted the whole experience of owning a Porsche Speedster. So they made their Volkswagen into a Porsche Speedster. So it's got Speedster, Porsche Speedster headlight grills on the headlights. And the really cool part is back here, this has a 36 horsepower. So like really low horsepower. But I put on a Judson supercharger, kind of a uh, period modification. You took the carburetor off, bolt the supercharger where the carburetor went, you bolt the carburetor onto the side of the supercharger, and you put a separate pulley on here to drive the belt. Uh, it's got a, uh, a, a glass bottle back there you fill with uh, Marvel Mystery Oil, and it, that oils the supercharger. There's an air cleaner for it. And that brings the horsepower from 36 up to about 50 horsepower. And then suddenly this car has the performance of a Porsche. It, it sounds right, it looks right. It's got great horsepower, it gets good gas miles. So this is a really cool car, but this is not one I'm looking forward to get rid of right now. Really, really dig it. I mean, it's been a part of my life for more than 40 years. And if you look at the color of this and the color of the Datsun 510, it's the same color. I fell in love with the color, decided I didn't want to have an orange Datsun anymore. I wanted to have a blue Datsun. So that's part of my uh, Tom Cotter's wonderful world of barn finds. Here's another Morris Minor as a race car that I was building that I've, I've never finished. Maybe I won't finish, I don't know, but I, I cut the roof off, it was a sedan, put this funky roll cage in, took the headlights off the fenders and made a, a headrest out of it. I louvered the back trunk, I louvered the rear fenders, I louvered the hood. I got a really early Morris Minor grill it's called a low light grill. So the headlights used to be up here for US spec. Well, this is moved down here. So this is like the funkiest Morris mine in the world. This Volkswagen GTI over here. My wife and I bought this new in 1986 and you know, drove it for 200,000 miles. It's still a really solid car. The body's solid. The paint is still excellent. The interior could use a little bit of work and the engine could use a rebuild, I think. Um, here's a, I promise you this is the last Datsun 510 you'll see on Barn Find Hunter for a while. Now the one upstairs I showed you, that was $500. I bought it from the original owner. This was $80. You know, a guy had it in his carport and I stopped by it and it was way off the road. He said, you could see that car from the road? I said, yeah. And he said, yeah, I'm not doing anything with it. I might as well sell it. He said, make me an offer. I said, I don't know, $80. He said, okay, it's yours. So this is a rare one. It's a uh, 19, 80, uh, 68, this has got a long speedometer like this with a needle that goes like an old, you know, like an Oldsmobile might have had in the 50s or something. It's got accessories on here that other cars don't have, so I'm not going to fix it up. I'm, I'll probably just wind up selling it, but you know, for $80, how do you beat that? And finally, this is a 1964 Mercury Comet convertible that uh, is a project, but it's all been acid, this body's been acid dipped. It's 
it, the body is perfect and all the parts for it are here. Suspension members and uh, steering. It's got everything but, a, but an engine and a transmission. So if anybody's interested in a, in a project car, that's a, that's a really nice car. Look it up. Go Google 64 Mercury Comet and you'll see what it looks like. There's extra parts that come with it. E car. You can see it's right down to bare metal. So from here, we're going to go to my friend Keith Irwin's shop, which is a few miles away. You met Keith on a couple of episodes, but the most uh, memorable one was the episode where Keith helped me move the Cobra and the Ferrari from its longtime garage, where they had been for 42 years, to another garage, and then they were ultimately sold. Keith is my go-to guy for everything mechanical, and he does work on a lot of my cars, and he's got a very uh, active restoration shop, and, and I've got some <laughs> crappy cars behind his building too. So I'll show you what I got over there. So let's take a ride. All right, so this is the dark side of Tom Cotter. Not only do I preach to you that, you know, you can, you can own cars like this, I actually own them myself. And this car is actually an amazing car with an amazing story. <clears throat> I'll tell you why. This car started off as a 1946 Ford Woody Wagon. Woody Wagons in 46, I bet they cost, I'm guessing, $1,250 new, if you can believe that. Well, this car, this Woody Wagon, had the most expensive option you could get on a Woody at the time from Ford. It has a Marmon Harrington four-wheel drive conversion. You would pay $1,250 for the car. You'd pay another $1,250 to have this four-wheel drive conversion done by Marmon Harrington. They were based in Indianapolis. So this Woody, it's not a Woody anymore, but I'll tell you the story about that. This Woody was bought new by a family in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. They owned a ski area, but they couldn't afford a chairlift to get people to the top of the mountain. So they bought this four-wheel drive Ford and would bring people up to the top of the mountain. They would ski down, they'd bring them back up to the top of the mountain, ski down, and this was basically the chairlift. They would drive it up the dirt roads. The wooden body rotted away. Now this front part is a car. This is a car front. But from here back, it's a truck. So they took a Ford truck cab, welded it onto the front cowl here of the, of the Woody. They narrowed the roof so you can see a, a line of Bondo in the middle there. They narrowed it and they put a pickup truck body on there. And so then skiers sat in the back of the pickup bed, and instead of riding in a woody, now they just rode in the back of the pickup bed. So this thing worked hard its whole life. Let me tell you about Marmon Harrington's. Uh, they went on to build lots of truck four-wheel drive conversions for both small size Fords, but mostly big size Ford trucks. There are 19 Marmon Harrington cars known in the, in the world, 19. That, all the rest were rotted away, scrapped, whatever. I've owned three of them. So of 19 in the world, this is my third one. So the, the, the pickup bed and the frame is pretty well rotted on this. So I bought that kind of, it was a, <laughs> doesn't look so good now, but it never did look good. So this is a uh, similar year Ford that I bought out of California. Now there's no wood on here, but you know, on a Woody, you can have a new wood body made. So I was gonna take the four wheel drive components on that and move them onto this. But you know what, then I kind of lost interest in the whole deal. So that's for sale. And you know what? One recently sold for, I hope you're sitting down. A Marmon Harrington Woody sold in January at a, I think it was a Meekum auction in Florida for $346,000. That's how valuable those cars then are because they're so rare. I'd like to get 18 grand for the two of these things. So, you know, if somebody is watching this program and you're adventurous and talented, this has the potential to make you a lot of money. I got it because it made sense to me financially, so hopefully it will for you too. With barn finds, whatever was old is new again. This Ramble Marlin, you've seen, if you watched every episode of Barn Find Hunter, you've seen this car before. We found this during an episode where we were mostly in South Carolina, but a guy said, you know what? Just over the state line in Georgia, I've got a bunch more cars. So we followed them over like just one mile into Georgia, right off the interstate. And this car was one of many cars. You might remember a 54 Corvette under a lean-to, a bunch of big block Chevelles, all sorts of stuff. But I really fell in love with this car. It's a, uh, a Ramble Marlin 
with a, I think it's a V8 engine. I think it's, I think it's a 287 cubic inch. And it's got a four-speed factory transmission. I said, man, that's unusual. And it ran. I said to the guy, you know what? After we stopped filming, I thought about it, thought about it. I said, I think I'd like to buy that car from you. And when I got it home, I was looking at what I just bought. He delivered to my house. And I'm lying underneath here, looking at the chassis and the body. And I could see the headliner from inside the fender. I said, oh, that's not good. Well, there's so much rust here in the firewall that there was a hole. And I could actually see the headliner. Hmm. What did I buy here? So I called my friend Keith. We're at his shop now. He said, well, yeah, that's going to need some work. I said, you know what? I probably need to get out of this car. He said, I'd like to have it. I said, I'll tell you what. You know my Datsun 510? If you'll paint my 510, I'll give you this car. And that's what we did. Swapped. And so Keith is going to restore this car because it's so darn original. And welding up holes in the firewall is no problem for him. Oh, here he is. Come on over here, Keith. So Keith is a guy, his restoration shop makes barn finds into show winners. So, and he's, he wanted to tell you a little bit about this car called a Vanguard, so take it away. Uh, this is a pretty unique little car right here. It's a 1956 Vanguard Triumph. Um, found the cars in South Carolina in a salvage yard. They only made 20 left-hand drive of these cars. This is actually one of them. So. Uh, we were going to try to fix it up, put it back together again. We just don't have time for it. But uh, so here it is. It'll be up for sale shortly, Tom. Really? You're selling this? I am. What do you ask for it? Uh, $1,000 to take it, and it has a clean title. What kind of motor? It has no engine, no transmission. It came originally with the same engine that my 49 Triumph had, the 2 liter, the 2.0. So 1000 bucks. OK. Are you paying attention to this uh, in barn fine handle land? This is a unique car. You won't see another one. If you look this car up on the internet, uh, my car is the one that comes up. Huh, this one? This one. How many are left in the world, I wonder? No clue. Man. All right, Keith. Well, thanks for, thanks for visiting us Absolutely. back Absolutely. Glad y'all gonna... came by. Well, thank you. I got to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Maybe you'll see these cars again sometime. Maybe sometime uh, we'll, we'll do uh, maybe an update if Keith decides to make one out of two, or pro street this or whatever. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little adventure we've had in North Carolina. Happy hunting.